Hey guys, welcome to my playthrough of the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Um, if you remember, I did a cloak and dagger uh, stream in 2020 itself, I believe. Uh, we played a few of their games. Um, the uh, oh gosh, w the one that's like directly, just like a direct retelling of the the Lovecraft story, the Terrible Old Man. Um. I feel so terrible uh, that I can't remember all the games off the top of my head. Um, but like they, they are to me, they are kind of masters of point and click. Um, let's see, which ones did we play? Cloak and Dagger games. Um, I enjoy them very much as a developer, personally. Um, we did the terrible old man, I know for sure. Um, that was like the first one we did. Uh, a date in the park. Yes, I really love it. I was like, did they do a date in the park? Yes, they did. A date in the park, which is one of my favorite horror games because it's in broad daylight and football game. Um, they've also made Mudlarks and The Legend of Hand and Sumatra Fate of Yandi, and this is their latest one, The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Um, it came out in late September, so I'm a little late. Um, no, they did not make... Uh, that was Kathy Rain. Um, that's made by Joel Stoff Hosto, um, a singular dev. He, the, the other one he made was Whispers of a Machine, um, which I need to play like in my personal time before I decide if it's good stream material, because there's like different mechanics. And that one but um yeah i am excited for the excavation of hobbs borrow because as you can probably tell uh everything here is um like hand drawn assets so uh and it's a very unique style and i enjoy it very much so uh i'm gonna let you all hear what i've been hearing because when you click out of the window weird shit starts to happen because sometimes games just don't like it. This is what I've been hearing. My headphones have been sitting on my head. Holy, what? I saw you, menu screen. How dare you? That's probably why it was doing that. So yeah, let's get into it. I really don't know what to expect other than it's uh, folklore horror but they also kind of like they, they uh football game mary if you're curious was kind of lynchian horror okay and it's a point and click i i'm a sucker for point and clicks all right i will make adjustments to the sound if i need to I'm wondering if this is like a cosmic horror or Ah Miss Bateman. Welcome back to Ticehurst House. It's been quite some time. Terrible weather this evening, is it not? Nurse Blaketon has had enough of me smoking inside. Makes her cough, you see. Makes you cough too, bud. A bit of rain won't kill me, will it? Ah. Uh. You, uh, you mustn't be interested in me nattering on. Give my regards to your father. Nurse Blaketon is preparing his supper. You look pale, Miss Bateman. Do head inside. You'll catch your death out here. Good. You need to turn the volume up. Okay. Whoa. No, I'm interested in your nattering. Yeah, I like his voice, too. Dearest mother. I hope this letter will reach you. Oh. 
I have spent these past years in torment, trying to piece together what remains of fractured memories. What I am about to recount to you will seem beyond comprehension, but I beg for your patience. I will endeavour to explain the events that led me to Ticehurst House that night. As far as I can recall, this whole wretched story started with the receipt of a letter from a Mr. Leonard Shoulder. The letter brought me to the isolated village of Bewley, deep in the moors. Arrival. Achievement unlocked. I am New doing... station master in sight. I hope the village isn't too far away. I can't recall our exact meeting place. Mr. Shoulder mentioned it in his letter. Left click to walk and interact, right click to examine. To access the inventory and menu, move your mouse cursor to the top of the screen. Left click on an inventory item to select it, right click to examine it. Once an inventory item is selected, you can right click to deselect it. You can double click on an exit to teleport directly to it. Uh, they did that in Day in the Park. The game will occasionally autosave. You can also save any time via the menu. Keyboard, shortcuts, escape, menu, F5, quick save, M, map when available. F7 quick load. Spacebar hold show interactive hotspots. Okay. While I'm in here, let me. Okay, thank God. Turn the volume up a little bit. All right. My mother always told me not to walk on railway tracks. Uh, your mom would be right. Oh yeah, also, did I mention that it's set in Victorian England? So this is English folklore, which is a huge weakness of mine. If I take the sign, how would the trains know where to stop? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, thought we get more dialogue. Hello there? I ought to read Mr. Shoulder's letter again. I can't recall the name of our meeting place. Hey. Do we have some... I have six shillings and two pence. My assistant Kenneth is bringing more funds tomorrow. Okay. I don't like traveling with too much money on me. A gift from my mother. It bears my initials. T.B. Letters. Dear Miss Bateman. Wow, three pages. He's a, he's a chatty one. I write this letter in the hope of piquing your curiosity. I read about your expertise in the Barrows, and, I have, and if I understand correctly, you are writing a book on them and the treasures they contain. I live in the village of... Oh, I already forgot how to say it. And... British names are never as they look. I live in the village of Danny will learn how to pronounce it, where a most special barrow can be found in the outskirts. It is rectangular in form and is certainly tall enough to stand up in. The place is steeped in local legend, and there is rumor of secrets to be found deep within. I hope you will not, misunder or, uh, not misunderstand me and find this letter intrusive. If you wish to visit the town I need to learn how to pronounce, and excavate the barrow, I will be pleased to be your guide. Please send your response to the plow and furrow in. I shall await your letter. Yours respectfully, Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Oh, I see you there. Logan Dagger, you love popping people in like that, and it does freak me out a little bit every time. Uh, Miss Bateman, marvelous news. I shall meet you at 8 o'clock in the evening on the 14th of this new month at the Plow and Furrow Inn. The inn has fine rooms which you will find adequate for your short stay. When we meet, I shall tell you more of the circumstances surrounding the site, which is referred to locally as Hobbs Barrow. 
It is not located on my own land, but we will have no issue in gaining permission to excavate. I wish you a safe journey. I must make my way to the Plow and Furrow Inn. And yes, I will be achievement hunting as well. Excuse me? Yes? What can you tell me about Bewley? Bewley. Well, it used to be a thriving village. Not so much now. I don't spend much time there these days. Are you local? Ah, yes, a local I am. But I don't live in the village. Where are you travelling to today? That would be none of your business, young lady. Quite. Apologies. I'm looking for the Plough and Furrow Inn. Do you know where I can find it? Ah, young lady. Leave the station and follow the dry stone wall for around half a mile. You'll come to Bewley. Go straight ahead and you'll find the market square. The inn is to the side at square. Thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant journey. I love people with her accents. I find them so enchanting. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Young lady. Uh, what brings you to Bewley? I beg your pardon? What brings you to Bewley, miss? Uh... Well, yeah, it's British, because we're in, we're in Britain. <laughs> That's such a stereotypical name for the inn. Uh, let's see what happens when we tell the truth. I'm here to visit a local landmark, Hobbs Barrow. Hobbs Barrow? Well, I can't say I've heard of it. For what reason? I wish to excavate it. Grave robber, are you? Not at all. I merely have an interest in antiquities. Not much to be found in Bewley, if you ask me. You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. I'll take my chances. Hmm. Can't say I didn't warn you. Weren't that you... was odd. Yeah, weren't you waiting for a train? Oh. Goodbye, friend. The old woman told me to go straight ahead to get to the inn. I'll have time to explore tomorrow. I want to intrude. The old woman told me to go. I'll have time. This must belong to someone. I should leave it alone. The blacksmith looks closed. Beating raw metal into a fine object is an admirable skill. The bucket is rusty and full of holes. I don't wish to disturb the locals. Oh well. You're a protagonist, that's your job. The cross denotes this as the site of a market, or perhaps a site of traditional religious significance. I can't take the sign, nor do I want to. I want you to look at it. The sign is in a shabby state, but the shop appears to be a cobbler's. Okay, here we go. A fine example of a church. It looks like it was built in the Norman style. The building is in a dilapidated state. Black. A small plaque beside the door reads Vicarage. Okay. The Plough and Furrow Inn. The inn where I am to meet Mr. Shoulder. The sign is well out of reach. Well, I didn't want you to reach for it. The Plough and Furrow. I have a bit of time before Mr. Shoulder arrives. I should inquire about a room. The man looks thoroughly inebriated. Good. Hello there. What's the young lady doing out alone in this sodden weather? I'm heading to the Plough and Furrow. Bloody good pub, that. It has the finest ales in the whole county. Oh, I'll take you there if you like. Uh, I believe we are standing directly in front of it. <laughs> oh, so we are. Yes. Give us a kiss now, won't you? 
Ugh, of course we got a close up on that. Slap him. How dare you! Wench! What a buffoon. Achievement unlocked the slap. I would have smacked him for that anyway. I should speak to the innkeeper about a room. A fine exemplar of inebriation. Okay, so now I need to look at all the paintings and all of the plates. Slapping him the proper British way. The innkeeper is a serious looking man. A rather miserable looking fellow. He's playing a board game by himself. I think it's Three Men's Morris. They are engaged in an intense discussion. It's a crudely painted scene that appears to be of a biblical nature. What, Adam and Eve? I don't want to take the painting with me. Oh my god, I'm not telling you to take it, girl. I just want you to look. Even if the other clicks have something. The prices are cheap here. A decorative plate. This one depicts a cat. A decorative plate depicting a serpent. A decorative plate. This one depicts a bull. A decorative plate depicting an eagle. A decorative plate. This one depicts a dog. A decorative plate depicting a bear. The painting depicts a rocky edge lake. A small bronze plate states the name Lake Cubilius. A pixie faced peasant boy painted in a naive style. A majestic animal cut down in his prime. <laughs> Those points are nothing to fucking shake a stick at here. Let's see. Four. Eight. Uh, ten-pointer? This painting shows a Rubenesque figure brushing her hair. Quite unusual to see such a sensual work in a room like this. A colorful work depicting a bashful knight. It is signed N. Hamley. Okay. Ode to Tonbert. Achievement unlocked. Um, okay, and then there's a decorative plate that will be around. A biblical scene of some kind. An angel is depicted looking longingly to the heavens. A dreadful smell is emanating from the WC. Guessing water closet, i.e. bathroom. Can I talk to you guys. Hello, Miss. What do you want? I booger off. All right, then. Hello, sir. We are in the middle of a discussion here. Sorry to interrupt. Good afternoon, sir. Note for you here. I beg your pardon? I said there's note for you here, lass. Be on your way. Charming. Good day, sir. Hey. I'm getting, like, American Werewolf in London vibes right now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, lass. How can I help you? Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye, I know the man. I'm to meet him here tonight. Can I get you something to drink while you wait? Not yet, thank you. I am in need of a room for the night. Aye, we aren't short of those. One night, is it? I shall need at least two nights, maybe more. Aye, it is not a problem. Three shilling per night. That includes your dinner and tea. A fair price. I'll need that payment up front for the two nights. I have six shillings and two pence. Okay. My assistant Kenneth is bringing more funds tomorrow. I don't like travelling with too much money. Got at least that much. This is payment for the room. Thank you. Can I ask for your name, lass? Thomasina Bateman. And will Mr. Bateman be staying with us tonight? No, I am not wed. My assistant is arriving in Beaulieu tomorrow. Oh. Your assistant, you say? Will you be needing another room? Oh. Please. I'll keep a room spare. It's not quite as nice as yours, I'm afraid. 
Not a problem, sir. I'm oh. sure it will be adequate. Okay. Kenneth is a man of inexpensive taste. Here's your key. Just go through the door to the right of the bar, then up the stairs. Room number two. Thank you. Can I help you with your luggage? No, thank you, sir. I can manage. I should go upstairs and freshen up before Mr. Shoulder arrives. Ooh, okay. Room two, the Plough and Furrow Inn. This shall do nicely. Time to change into something more comfortable. <sighs> Much better. A risque. I don't wish to take it. A decorative it. plate depicting a goat. You've unlocked a curious collection. Ah, complimentary matches. Useful. Egg matches? Ah, comp yeah, thank you. Take them. <laughs> There's only one match left, though. My evening light shall be provided by this solitary candlestick. My evening light... A painting of surprising quality. It portrays a rocky outcrop overlooking a vast moor. Perhaps a local landmark. A sturdy-looking thing, useful to many a weary traveller. The wardrobe looks old, perhaps a hundred years or more in age. A rack, chair. A jug of water for drinking or washing. A decrepit set of drawers. Jammed shut. The wood must have warped over the years. I've stored my case in there, a box within a box. I've hung my dress inside. Aside from that, the wardrobe is empty. Hey. This may come in handy. Oh, I just, I thought you would be washing up, but all right. An empty bowl has been provided for washing. Well, you said you wanted to freshen up. I feel relatively clean. Perhaps I could use this water for something else. Hey. Okay. Just to be clear, the the thing I'm using um, right now is just like for missable achievements. It's not like a step by step guide on how the game goes. So. Um. Let's go. Miss Bateman, you've transformed. I feel far more comfortable in my outdoor clothing. You look like one of those explorers you see in the newspaper. I guess you could call me an explorer of sorts. I'm Stanley. Stanley Kemp. A pleasure to meet you, Stanley. And tell me, I trust your room is adequate? Most adequate. Excellent. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Kemp. Well, uh, I've been the proprietor of this inn for the last 16 years. I worked as a drover all over the country in my younger days. Saved up my coin and bought this place. It's a fine inn. Thank you. I often run short of ale, but my rooms are rarely full. We don't get many outsiders wanting to stay overnight here in Bewley. What can you tell me about Bewley? Aye, it's a quiet place. People keep to themselves, work hard. I look forward to exploring the village tomorrow. There's not a lot to see, lass. But St. Edmund's Church is a fine building. Worth a visit. Has Mr. Shoulder arrived yet? Still haven't seen head nor tail of him, Miss Bateman. What can you tell me about Mr. Shoulder? Aye, he's a quiet fellow. He only comes here to check his post. Yes, I've been corresponding with him using this address. Have you now? You found yourself an admirer. Dude. <laughs> Not quite. What business do you have with Lord Leonard then? Hmm, <sighs> see. There's always like the thing to like I want I want someone to like freak out though. Well, if you must know, I am what some people call a barrow digger. A what? 
A barrow digger. What in God's name is that? Are you familiar with tumuli? Afraid not. Barrow is another word for tumulus, or tumuli in the plural. A profoundly interesting subject. You've lost me. I excavate ancient burial sites looking for relics. A barrow is traditionally a circular mound of raised earth enclosing a burial chamber. Oh, I? You're a grave robber. I am no such thing. Don't worry, lass. I've met all sorts in here over the years. I won't tell anyone. I assure you, my goal is more noble than petty grave robbery. What sort of relics do you find, then? Gold? Silver? Bones? Well, rarely gold or silver, but treasures, certainly. Ancient pottery is the most common find. I've been excavating barrows all over the country. I'm documenting my findings in preparation for my book. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. Oh, aye. Very interesting. But what does old Leonard have to do with this? He sent me a letter in which he told me about an unusual barrow in Bewley. A site called Hobbs Barrow. I'm meeting him here this evening to find out more. I've lived here nigh on my whole life, and I've heard nout about a Hobbs Barrow. Are you sure you've never heard of Hobbs Barrow? Not in my life, lass, but I'll tell you something. The moors stretch further than the eyes can see when you leave this village. There's no doubt many a discovery to be made. Mr. Shoulder said the Barrow is well known locally, a place of legend. I'm afraid you're going to have to speak to him about it. Why are you interested in digging around in the dirt, lass? Haven't you better things to do with your time? I enjoy nothing more than the thrill of discovery, uncovering the past and piecing together our history. I inherited this passion from my father. Oh, a barrow digger too, eh? Indeed. He would take me with him on excavations as a child. Does he still come with you now, on your own adventures? I'm afraid my father's been bedbound by illness for many years. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, lass. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. He is well looked after at a private hospital. Thanks for your time. As you were. Who the fuck do you want to know what I'm up to, dude? Stop it. Like, like how single I am. Knock it off. Good day, sir. Any change in conversation here? Do you know a Mr. Leonard Shoulder? You ought to be careful asking too many questions around here. Be on your way. Oh, I don't mean to... Listen to me, will you? Be on your way! Yeah, I think they're lying about Hobbs Barrow here. <laughs> Hello, sir. Oh, shit. What? I'm waiting here for a man named Leonard Shoulder. Do you know him? I don't. Do you, love? Never heard of him. There you have it. Now clear off. Ah, he was not there before. A curmudgeonly looking old fellow. I don't think. Hello, sir. Hi. Do you know a Mr. Leonard Shoulder? You're not local. You've come on that bloody train, haven't you? Bewley's going to dogs. My name is Thomasina Bateman, and you are... None of your business, lass. Where's your husband? None of your business, sir. Ha! You're brave coming in here, all on your own. I'm a grown woman. I'm Cyril. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Cyril. I take it you are not enamoured with the railway station. You is going to be swarming with outsiders, <laughs> like you. We don't want you coming here. It's as simple as that, lass. Why not? This is our town, our land. I assure you, I am not here to cause trouble. We'll see about that, won't we? What can you tell me about Bewley? We're a proud community. I've lived here my whole life. Not much here to interest folks like you. Folks like me? Aye. Outsiders, city slickers. Do you know Mr. Shoulder? That be none of your business, lass. I don't come to your city poking around asking questions, do I? Man just wants to enjoy his ale in peace. Bye for now. Ta-da, lass. Mr. Shoulder should really be here by now. I'll sit down and wait. Is we're ready to start using inventory on people. <laughs> 
Where on earth is he? What a waste of time this is turning out to be. Evening there, miss. Not you again. I just wanted to apologize for earlier. I deserve that slap. Here I'm sorry for my behavior. The drink gets a hold of me sometimes. Is this Let's start again. Mr. Shall Shoulder? We? My name is Arthur Tillett. No. Thomasina Bateman. What brings you to Bewley, anyway? I'm here to meet someone, but he has not arrived. His loss, if you ask me. Perhaps you know the gentleman, Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Oh, I know Mr. Shoulder, all right. If I may be so bold as to say, he's a bit long in the tooth for you. The relationship is not what you're implying. I've never met him. In fact, I know very little about him at all. Get me an ale and I'll tell you all about the old sod. No use pissing people off. One ale coming right up. Thank you very much, Miss Bateman. Then I'll tell you all about old Leonard's shoulder. I think I have enough. I have only two pence left. My assist. How can I help you? A tankard of your finest ale, Mr. Kemp. There we are. Two pence, please. Thank you. This was the last of my money. Yep. Kenneth will be here tomorrow with more funds. Will he? A tankard of warm ale. I prefer a glass of Portuguese port wine myself. Okay, well, you're in the rural English uh, countryside. You're not going to get Portuguese port wine. Here you are, Arthur. Thanking you. Oh, that hits the spot that does, lass. Now then. Old Len. Leonard Shaw. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Arthur? Mr. Tillett? Oh, for heaven's sake. The man is in a drunken stupor. It, do it. Oh, what the hell was that for? You passed out, Mr. Tillett. Oh, sorry, lass. Where were I? Leonard's shoulder. Hold on another minute. I'm making for a piss. Oh, my God. This man is unbelievable. I agree. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Feels like an hour has passed. Uh, it likely Perhaps has. Perhaps I should go in there and check on him. He's gonna be dead or some shit, isn't he? Oh, they left. Cyril seems gruff and unwelcoming, but I sense he may be a kind man under this facade. Miss Bateman? My apologies. The ladies are closed due to faulty plumbing. You'll have to use the gents. Lovely. Of course. What? Mr. Tillett? What the fuck? The mirror is coated in a thick layer of grime. The water is brown, quite ghastly. Just walk into a fucking, like, summoning? These look modern. I'm surprised. Is Mr. Tillett in there? It sounds like someone is in there. Er Mr. Tillett? Mr. Tillett, are you in there? I'm getting fucking corpse party flashbacks. If you know, you know. Mr. Tillett, are you in there? 
a cat. What? Well, you're not Mr. Tillett. Hello, Meow Meow. The mangy thing is fast asleep. He knows to the Meow Meow. I'd rather not touch it. The thing stinks to high heaven. I can see it's still raining out there. He leaves. The cold draft is leaking in from under the door. This leads outside. The door opens a crack, but appears to be blocked from the other side. I think I can hear someone moving around. I certainly could. Mr. Tillett? Arthur, are you out there? Judging from the draft coming from below, this door must lead outside. I should investigate further. But like going outside? The door is blocked from the out. Yeah. Did he like fucking just ease out? Did he bounce? Excuse me, sir. Oh. Sir? They're so good with their atmosphere. The old man has disappeared into the darkness. Oh. I best turn back to the inn. Oh, look at how small she is in comparison. That is not an exaggeration, by the way. The English moors are huge. single glove is lying in the mud. A pearly white gent's glove. It's certainly unlike anything Mr. Tillett was wearing. It seems rather out of place here. Peculiar. The post has been embellished with a fine bronze bust of a horse. Sturdy looking barrels, no doubt used to store ale. A warm glow permeates from within, making me feel somewhat cold and damp. Oh, could that be because of the rain, Thomasina? A beam of wood is propped up against the door, barring it closed from the outside. Hmm, someone has wedged the door shut. Mr. Tillett, why would he have done that? Mr. Tillett leave, then block the door behind him. Something strange is going on here. Oh, you're only noticing that now. We're back in Satan's bathroom here. I'd rather oh. Be nice to the meow meow. Oh. Last orders. I should get some sleep. Finding the missing men of Bewley shall have to wait for tomorrow. Good evening, sir. Oh, it was worth a shot. How can I help? Have you seen Arthur Tillett? I thought he were with you. He went to the lavatory and has not returned. <laughs> that sounds like Arthur Tillett. Don't worry, lass. He'll be back. Thanks for your time. As you were. What the fuck? Kenneth will be arriving tomorrow at midday. I should get some sleep. No way it gives me that option. The crackling fireplace is more welcoming than the facial expressions of the locals. Like somebody leaves something behind. No. Kenneth will okay. be. Yes, I must get some sleep. I shall track down Mr. Shoulder tomorrow. Miss Bateman? Yes? Off to bed? Yes. I'm afraid Mr. Shoulder has let me down. The rotter. Perhaps he will make himself known tomorrow. I should hope so. This is turning into a waste of my time. Ah, don't mind the locals, miss. It's just that we don't get a lot of visitors in Bewley. Quite. They mean well, believe me. 
Sure, Mr. Kemp. Please, call me Stanley. Good night, Stanley. Sleep well, Miss Bateman. Did you get thumbs to open the door? Hello. Oh, Jesus. Fucking shit. All right. I Applause to Kazi for knowing what Dark Seed is. Jesus Christ. I'm getting more like Shadow of the Comet vibes. Such horrid dreams. That was not a dream. I love her little preen. Cute. Bolted from the inside, just as I left it last night. <laughs> no, that cat got as in I here. As I suspected, I must have dreamt of that wretched-looking cat. Stop insulting the magical meow meow. I must say, I'm relieved. Right then, let's see if I can track down the elusive Leonard's shoulder. I'm rather anxious to get to this barrow. I also wonder what happened to Mr. Tillett. Let me see here. Escape? Yeah, that it. Um, go oh, up. Cause I I turned my um, I turned the game volume up a lot in OBS, and it's still. I'm so creative with my titles, I know. Good morning, Miss Bateman. Good day, Stanley. Did you sleep well, Miss Bateman? Yes, thank you, Stanley. Splendid. I'm happy to report the rain of yesterday has lifted. It's a clear morning outside. Crisp. I've prepared a room for your assistant. What time will he be arriving? His train will get in around midday. Kenneth will also be bringing my excavation equipment. Oh, I. What does that entail? Picks, shovels, buckets, lighting and such. He usually packs it in a large crate. Come to think of it, I'll need somewhere to store it. You're welcome to use the alley behind the inn for any such bulky items. Is it safe to do such a thing? I can assure you the local folk are not thieves, Miss Bateman. That's not what I... Now, now, say nothing more of it. Thank you, Stanley. I'll let you get on with your day. I'll be back with my assistant when he arrives. Miss Bateman? Yes? I've something I wish to get off my chest, as it were. I've been tossing and turning all night, Miss Bateman. I feel rotten, I really do. What on earth are you talking about? As you know, I like to run an honest establishment. And well, I have not been honest with you, lass. I do know of Hobbs Barrow. Ah, called it. You do? I do. Many here do. There are stories tied to that place, you know. If I've learned anything in this life, it's that some stones are best left unturned. Old Leonard's shoulder is someone to be wary of, too. I can't tell you what to do, lass, but you'd best avoid him. Why must I be wary of Mr. Shoulder? The man has a certain reputation. For what? You've seen it already. Were he here to meet you last night? No. Precisely. 
a man not to be trusted. Where does Mr. Shoulder live? I can't say for sure. As I think I told you last night, he's a quiet man and keeps to himself. He only comes in here to collect his post. Leads me to believe he lives a fair distance away. And certainly not in the village itself. Might someone around Bewley be able to help me find him? You could ask around. As I say, lass, Bewley folk mean well. Don't forget that. Why lie to me about Hobbs Barrow? I know, lass, I know. I feel dreadful. But why? What are these stories you speak of? I really can't tell you more. If you insist on visiting that place, you'll have to seek out Mr. Shoulder. He brought you here. He should be the one to tell you. I must say, Mr. Kemp, this is all quite puzzling. I've never let local superstitions stop me in the past. I pride myself on being a woman of logic and reason. I have no time to waste on such matters. As I say, seek out Mr. Shoulder. He can tell you more. Where is Hobbs Barrow? I don't know. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. Hmm. I now find that hard to believe. The moors are vast, lass. Yeah. I tend not to go wandering out there. A grown man could lose himself and not be seen again. Hmm. I shall return later. Good day to you, lass. Ma'am, you're oh, from if England. if you see Herbert around here, be sure not to feed him. Herbert? A local stray cat. He comes in now and then searching for scraps. I'm sick of cleaning his vomit off the floor. Quite. I'll be sure not to feed him. Thank you. Oh, we're feeding that cat, right? This, this is Leighton's grandmother. I don't know. Uh, I'm sensing cosmic hollows. Okay, the game's volume should now be way higher. Oh no, don't quit. Soon. Like, lady, you live in the UK. You should know. It's still Satan's bathroom I in here. I must say, last night has rather put me off using these toilets. I want to know if there's a sale going on in there. Um. Um. Uh, like, you live in England, you should it know. It seems I may be fighting a battle against some sort of local superstition. Is there a single bar in England that doesn't have some ghastly tale attached to it? Hogwash. All of it. I have a few hours until Kenneth arrives. I should use this time to find Mr. Shoulder. Well, like, most people know that... The moors, like most local people, like in England, know that moors are not to be messed with. Oh, I'm looking for my map. Is this the map? Oh. Hello. I yeah, they they love their close-ups. My name is Thomasina, and you are. They're good at them, though. Now then, that's none of your concern, love. What do you do around here? Hey, up. Oh, you're not scared of sticking your neb in. I look after the churchyard. Dig the graves. Ha! <laughs> what can you tell me about the church? Aye, it's a church. Quite. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Lurk. What can you tell me about Bewley? Not much around, dear love. Not worth mentioning to you, like. I see. What can you tell me about Hobbs Barrow? Not to be found digging around in those things. You know of local barrows, then? Don't concern yourself. I love dry British humor, too. a man named Leonard Shoulder. I don't know out about no Leonard Shoulder. Goodbye. The uh they they really um they really aced the uh like the language, like the English countryside language. Especially for the Victorian times. 
a humble local dwelling. Like, let's take a look at the, the oh. road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Yeah, and you want to tell the innkeeper, like, okay, I get it. Stanley's kind of a creep, but like, you want to tell him you don't believe him when he says he doesn't know where the fucking barrow is when it looks like that. A child. The little whelp looks determined to slaughter the very air itself. What, what, what brought about the whelp comment? Holy shit! The young woman looks extremely <sighs> bored by it all. She's probably watching her kid and she's bored. Hello? Uh, yes? My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Douglas. It's a pleasure to meet you, Douglas. That's a great sword technique you have. Thanks, miss. Mr. Crozier's gonna make me a real one when I turn 12. I'm preparing myself to fight the lantern worm. What is the lantern worm? It's gonna come back and get us all. John Lantern thought he killed it at the River Ware, but my father told me it still lives. We must all be prepared. The lantern worm isn't real, Douglas. Father just told you that to get you out of his air. Not true! I saw it slithering out by the beck. Like a giant eel it were. I ran home so fast I thought I would fly. Sorry, miss. My brother has a vivid imagination. Children often do at his age. Oh, I'll keep little training! Brother. You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly! Douglas, this lady doesn't want to hear your nonsense. Who wants Douglas to now be the MVP of the game? Like, when she is in the most dangerous of danger, you know? Like, when she's just in ultimate peril, this kid just runs in and stabs him. You? Yes, she is on a high horse. She's on an academic high horse, for sure. She's like, I'm smarter than everyone in this town. Absolute hogwash. Okay, chat. <laughs> it seems like chat just wants this kid to be the hero. Good. <laughs> Do you like living in Bewley? Yeah, I do. Are you from the city? I'm from a long way away. You must have come on the train. I love watching all the steam puff up into the sky. Have you been on the train yourself? No, miss. Our parents don't have the money for train tickets. Father says we have all we need here in Bewley. <sighs> Perhaps this nice lady would like to take you away with her on the train. <laughs> No, I need to stay and protect Bewley from the lantern worm. Who's Mr. Crozier? He's a blacksmith. His forge is just over there on the other side of the square. Don't you think 12 years of age is a little young for a real sword? I'll be a master swordsman by then. Madam. You're essentially an archaeologist. Do you know your history? Then again, she's from prim and proper Victorian England, so, I mean, I get it, but like, Adam. Have you heard of Hobbs Barrow? What's that? A local Ooh. burial mound. Our parents don't let us wander far from the village. What's a burial mound? Don't you mind about that, Douglas. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? That's a funny name. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. Aww. Until Cloak and Dagger makes him a little demon, he's adorable. <laughs> Knowing Cloak and Dagger, they could also make him into a little demon. <laughs> okay, so this is his sister, not his mom. No wonder she's Good day. bored. Hello, miss. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Betty. Nice to meet you, Betty. What are you up to? My brother is practicing his sword fighting technique. I'm to watch him until he tires himself out. 
I'm tireless! This time last month it were all about his teaspoon collection. This month it's swords. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No. Are you sure? Yes. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Our parents don't like us talking to strangers, miss. So you know of it? No. Are you sure? Yes. Goodbye. Bye, miss. She made things pretty clear. This is a vicary. I don't think anyone is home. The door has been boarded up. The yeah, I know it looks like a ruin, but like... Worth a shot. This was... The sign is in a... The cobbler. Hmm. No one here. Interesting. I don't think anyone is home. I know, sure. The blacksmith is toiling away. A fantastic specimen. Alas, it is not mine to take. You could go look at it. <laughs> Good day. Yes. Mr. Crozier, I presume. Aye, George Crozier, at your service. My name is Thomasina. Aye, can I help you? Are you a Bewley native, Mr. Crozier? Aye, born and bred. That's where my father's forge before mine. How is business faring? I do an honest trade. There'll always be horses needing shoes and farmers needing tools. You let me know if you need out made or mended. I'll do you a fair price. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. What can you tell me about Bewley? We don't get many visitors here, outside of market days. But there's plenty of work for the village blacksmith. Where are you from, then? I arrived yesterday on the train from London, by way of Derby. Oh, aye. I've heard about London. What have you heard? Uh -oh. No wonder plenty she's on her high horse. There. Yes, indeed. The city is always changing and moving forward. Too busy for me, though, lass. I prefer a quieter pace. Aye. When do market days run in Bewley? Once or twice a month. The next one is tomorrow. How delightful. Unless your vice is cabbages, they'll be not to interest a young lady. I don't mind a cabbage. Then you're in luck. Oh, you're fine. Just drive safe. Of all the lovely new castle accents. So you said cabbage, I started having Persona 4 flashbacks. I noticed your spectacular fossil specimen. Oh, I, I collect them. This one is called an... Ammonite. I'm impressed, lass. From the Jurassic period, I'd venture. Do you collect them too, then? My true interests lie in comparatively modern history. Oh, I, well, I do love a fossil. It's important to remember that we all end up in the soil eventually. Quite. It's a little sinister. Do you know a man by the name of Leonard Shoulder? Oh, aye. Old Leonard. Have you seen him recently? No, not recently. Do you know where he lives? Why all these questions, lass? I need to speak with him. He invited me to Bewley. Oh, he'll turn up. I've seen him in the plough and furrow from time to time. But do you know where he lives? I need to find him. I believe he lives somewhere out on the moors. Oh, good. Can't tell you out more than that. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Do you know of a local landmark named Hobbs Barrow? There's a fair many barrows found out on the moors, lass. Too many to put a name to. Not a soul in Bewley pays them any mind. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. I think there's some there's some stuff we can learn and get at the church. In memory of Peter Black. In memory of William Ager. In memory of Mabel Hurst. In memory of Benjamin Garkham. In memory of Millicent Smith. In memory of Henry Crozier. Father. In memory of Romeo Hegg. Dearly missed by his beloved Juliet. 
Ah. Uh. In memory of Percival Roach. In memory of Barnaby Tillett. Why did the name have to be Barnaby? In memory of George Paxton. The woman has a kind face. Hello. Good day. Would you like to buy one of these cakes, pet? What kind of cakes do you have? I have some lovely Bakewell puddings. The sweetest marriage of almond and jam. I can tell you're not from around here, because if you were, you would know about my Bakewell puddings. They are quite famous. Alas, I'm not carrying any money with me. That's unfortunate, pet. I'm sorry, I, I can't give them away for free. The money goes to the church, you see, and one cannot shirk one's duty to the church. I understand. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? This is De Plancy. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. De Plancy. Likewise, pet. This is so bad that because I've been like folklore, I'm I'm just ready for anyone to turn into like a shrieking banshee, especially the nice old lady. Tell me about yourself, Mrs. De Plancy. About me? <laughs> What would you possibly want to know about me? I have been attending St. Edmund's Church my whole life. You got her started. I always want to help where I can, so I sell my baked goods and all the proceeds go to its upkeep. This place means so much to me. Oh, that that moment actually kind of reminded me of my Nana a little bit, my late Nana. Um, she was the she was the person I was closest to in my family outside of my mom and dad. Um, <laughs> not not in the way of like what is there to know about me, but like if you got her started, she could just go. I come by it very honestly. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> um, she could just go forever. So just that moment of like, oh, well, I don't know if there's actually, and then there's just 10 million things. That was like such like a, a nostalgic moment for me. Your cakes look delicious. I can assure you they are. You'll not find better in the entire county. What can you tell me about St. Edmund's Church? Isn't it the finest building? It's been standing here since the 12th century. The box pews in the nave are very fine and date back to the 17th century. The door is open if you'd like to worship. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. Old British churches are very, very pretty. Um... There's one in a town where my where one of my friends lives, and I'm not going to say the name of it because of that. But um, that church has been through hell and back. There's like barely anything left of the original church. It's 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 just like burned down and been in like so many weird freak accidents so many times. The history of it is like astounding. It's a very beautiful church too. Do you know a local man called Leonard Shoulder? Yes, I know Leonard. What business do you have with him? It's a long story, but I'm trying to find where he lives. I'm afraid I don't know, dear. Father Roach has access to the parish register. He might be able to help you. English churches are gorgeous, but I'm afraid of churches at night. That's... I mean, that's legit. <laughs> That's completely legit. Okay, we have a couple of things about Father Roach. What can you tell me about Father Roach? He is a lovely man and an exemplary servant of the Lord. He's been the vicar of St. Edmunds for many years. Where can I find Father Roach? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Hearn Wood to the west of the village. Thank you. I'll go find him. Be sure to listen out for his merry whistling. Such a jolly man. Where can I find Father Roach again? At 
this time of day, he'll be Thank you, Mrs. Uh, what do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Hobbs what? Hobbs Barrow, a local burial mound. The only place of burial I know about and care for is in this very churchyard. Thomasina, sweetie, you're very smart. I'm going to need you to let it click that other people are going to be lying to you. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. No one here is going to tell you. Whoa. Goodness me, look at these box pews. I've never seen any as tall as that before. Most unusual architecture, even for the Normans. Is that a necklace? Hmm. Someone has left a necklace hanging here. Yoink. A silver cross. Sterling by the look of it. Yoink. Maybe I can reunite it with its owner. A fine white glove, gent style. I found it in the alleyway behind the plough and furrow. I think this might be genuine sterling silver. The pews are contained within compartments that can be locked. I've seen a similar design in other Norman churches around England, but this is a particularly impressive example. Locked. Locked as well. I think they all might be. I can admire the craftsmanship from afar. Stained glass depictions of various biblical scenes. It's not my specialist area. A memorial list of former vicars. They stretch back several hundred years. Those have seen better days. I love that they have like the teleport to the exit function. I think that's great. It's locked. Not something that a lot of uh, point and clicks. Oh no, wrong exit. Be careful. Oh Jesus. Okay. Um. There's Jolly Whistling. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh, Dagger's way too good at those close-ups. Oh, gross! Bro. I'm very sorry. Oh, the shame. This malaise will not pass. Oh, the nausea. I need your help, young lady. Tell me what you need. Let the blood from my arm. What? Excuse me? Got me. I beg you. What? Disgrace! <laughs> oh my god! Also, I'm sorry if anyone got like a gag reflex from that. Oh, I know bloodletting, but like, oh my god. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, seeing people nauseous makes me a little nauseous, so, um, you can tell Silent Hill too. Eddie was just a blast for me. I don't think I have anything to cut him with. <laughs> Matchbox, a room key. <laughs> can I cut you with a cross? Do you have, do you have a knife? The vicar looks dreadfully ill. Are you sure this is the only way, father? I beg you. It's the only cure for this torturous malady. Are you sure? I bet it's the Okay, well, I need something to cut him with. Climb open. I don't wish to look too closely. Go to the vomit. I'm not going near it. It smells disgusting. Okay, well, I, I need a knife. Oh, spectacles. The vicar's spectacles lie broken on the forest floor. Ouch! The broken lens is extremely sharp. Okay, well, good. Take it. Ouch! The broke. No! The vic. Take it! Love? 
Perhaps I shouldn't risk soiling this glove until I find its owner. Really? Here's your hanky. This handkerchief was a gift from my mother. I hope she will understand. This should work. Yeah. Dirty, broken glass. Let's just cut it with that. Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, it will cure me of my ills. Oh, God, we might get a close up. I shall I do as you ask, Father. Okay, nice and subtle, at least. Thank you, Cloak and Dagger. The blood letter. Whew. Thank the Lord for my spare pair. God bless you. I already feel quite better. I'm glad, Father. The rapid healing properties of bloodletting cannot be overstated. I'm Frederick Roach, vicar of St. Edmund's Church. My name is Thomasina Bateman. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> oh, you don't want to dirty a gent's glove, but your mother's hanky? Perfect. Yeah, I know. I'm like, bruh, who says you're even going to need that glove? Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. Oh. What ails you, Father Roach? I... I just ate a rotten berry, that's all. Yeah, I'm buying that. I like to pick blackberries for my supper, you see. They are quite delicious, as long as you mind the bramble. Are you all buying that? My apologies again. I wish we had met in different circumstances. I'm totally buying that. Are you all buying that? He's completely telling me, okay, I believe you. <laughs> Are you from Bewley originally? I was born in our very own St. Edmunds. It's quite the story. Do tell. My mother was sheltering there as a frightful tempest raged. And lo, did her waters break right there and then in that pew. One could say that you were born into your role, father. <laughs> Indeed. When my mother told me the story as a young boy, I knew that this was my calling. St. Edmund's is a fine building. Thank you for saying so. It's hard work keeping her in good shape, but our congregation is always willing to lend a hand in the Lord's name. What about your congregation? Numbers have fallen over the years, I must say. But those that remain are faithful and full of his spirit. What is it like being the vicar here? Every day is a blessing, my child. I have a great love for our parish, and the Lord looks after us. What can you tell me about Bewley? It's a quiet town. The railway line, which I presume you arrived by, is the only news of note we've had here for years. I've heard the new station has received a... Mixed reaction. <laughs> I've heard many a debate, it's true. But my role is not to adjudicate on that matter. Ooh, adjudicate. I'm very busy in my own work, you see. Uh, I was talking with Mary and Kazi about words that we like. And I mentioned that Katie and I both like pontificate, but adjudicate is another very good word. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I can't say I've heard of it. No, of course it's not. It's supposedly a famous local landmark. Oh, my God. I'm afraid I know nothing about it. <laughs> I'm a Cena. Why don't you catch on? I'm looking for Mr. Leonard's shoulder. Oh, yes. Are you a relative? No, it's a long story, but he invited me to Bewley. And he didn't tell you his address? He was to meet me last night at the Plough and Furrow, but he never came. I see. Well... Let me welcome you to Bewley on his behalf. Thank you, Father. Do you know where Mr. Shoulder lives? Let me think. It's been many moons since I've paid him a visit. Perhaps you could allow me to take a look at the parish register. No need. I remember it now. Hmm. A fair hike across the moors. Yeah, of course. Could you please give me directions? I'll take you there myself. It's the least I can do after you aided me, so. Capital. Thank you. Just let me know when you're ready to pay him a visit. I'll be resting here for the time being.
Whew, okay, sorry. I got like cold all over from uh from that nausea bloodletting thing. I'm kind of squeamish. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. No doubt home to many a woodland creature. I shall see you later this oh. evening, gents. Well, I say. Greetings, my dear. Hello. Hello, sir. A pause on your beauty, for I shall see you again soon. Wait. That Some nerve. That's actually kind of smooth. Lady, you're blushing. Yeah. I most certainly am not. Are you kidding? I would be. Sorry, lass. No way through here today. Says who? Lord Panswick. Now get back before you find yourself under a falling tree. My name is Thomasina Bateman. Oh, I. You're not from round here, Thomasina Bateman. No, just visiting. What is your name, sir? Horace. Are you in charge here? I am indeed. Tell me. Who was that arrogant man here just now? A lord. Just someone passing by. It sounded like you knew him better than that. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's none of your business. What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? We're chopping down trees. <laughs> there is no need to be sarcastic. Oh, I love We're it. Keep going. employed by Lord Panswick. He's ordered us to gather logs from his woods. That's what we're doing. These are his woods. Aye, his lordship owns most of the land round Beoli. Who is Lord Panswick? Our governor. He's the governor of the whole town. All right, Owen, back to work now. He lives in Beaulie? Aye, not far away. But his lordship doesn't like questions. Or visitors. Now please leave us to our work. I just keep harassing you. Why are you gathering logs for Lord Panswick? By heck, you ask a lot of questions. <laughs> if you must know, his lordship is repairing an old ruin on his land. We oh. need the timber for the restoration work. How intriguing. What type of ruin is Lord Panswick restoring? An old chapel. I should rather like to see it. Not possible. His lordship does not welcome visitors to his estate. Yeah, so we're going at some point, right? Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No, I don't. Can you let me get back to my work now? Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. That arrogant man. I, that was smooth AF. I don't know. Okay. Okay, okay. So I'm trying to, like, get a layout. This young fellow looks miserable. <laughs> she has a puckish little face. Damp rag dolls have been laid out to dry in the dreary sun. Sweet little flowers. The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. Oh. Remarkable. A gargantuan fossilized ammonite. This would look fantastic on my mantelpiece. Hey! Stay away from that! Don't touch it! It's bad luck to touch the ammon's horn. I'm serious. Uh, fine. Hello there, my name's Thomasina. Yeah? How are you? Go away! <laughs> what do you know about Lord Panswick? I heard he owns the whole county. Have you met him? No, he lives out on the moors somewhere. But everyone does what he tells them to. Why is that? Because he has a lot of money. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? No. 
Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? No. Goodbye. Good day, little one. What's your name? Hello, miss. I'm Jane and this is my brother, Wally. Lovely to meet you. I'm Thomasina. I'd introduce you to my dolls, but they're drying out at the moment. This is a lovely little beck. It's where we get our water, miss. It's good for drinking and cleaning. Your dolls look lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Today was their bath day. Tell me more about the Ammon's horn. Daddy said we should never touch it. It will make the god angry. What god? Ammon, of course. We'll just play into the fact that she's from London and on her high horse. Jane, this is a fossil. It's a horn. What's a fossil, miss? A fossil is an impression of a prehistoric plant or animal embedded in rock and preserved in petrified form. This particular animal was called an ammonite. I'm confused. It's not a horn? No. It's the impression of a long-dead sea creature. Well, I believe my daddy. He doesn't lie to me. Your father is somewhat correct. For you see, ammonites were given their name for the Egyptian god Ammon. See, I told you, it's Ammon's horn. My daddy is always right. <sighs> yeah, don't be a fucking smartass to a bunch of kids. Wally doesn't say much. He's mad you with me because he's bored, miss. He thinks he's too old to play with dolls. I see. Where are your parents? They are picking apples from the big tree in our yard. Daddy and I sell them at the market. That sounds nice. But they don't mind us playing at the beck, as long as we don't touch the Ammon's horn. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... Jane! No, miss. Mm. Are you sure? I swear. Do you know an old man called Leonard Shoulder? No, miss. Goodbye. Bye, miss. They aren't mine to take. Okay. Again, I kind of just want to get a layout. There's also an achievement Hello. with her here. Good day. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Wretched man. They oh. say he is restoring a chapel near his manor. But for whom and to what god, I ask? Is he a man of faith? <laughs> I've barely seen him set foot in St. Edmund's. It doesn't stop him from acting as our god-given ruler. Stay away from him, pet. Don't get yourself tangled up in local affairs. I certainly don't intend to. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. The trusty trowel, the barrow digger's best friend. Excuse me, do you think anyone would mind if I borrowed this trowel? You help yourself, dear. Father Roach won't mind lending it. Just be sure to put it back when you're finished. Of course, thank you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. She's so sweet, and I'm just waiting for her to turn evil. Hey, yo, Crow. Samuel Bryden. Death is only a shadow across the path to heaven. Here lies Margaret Tillett, beloved mother, wife, and sister. John Purchase, dearly beloved husband of Florence. Forever in Light, Anne Kemp. Joseph Davis. Joseph Davis. Okay. Oh, it was on top of the... Here lies Elizabeth Farnaby. Fresh grave. This appears to be a recently dug, unmarked grave. William Paxton. Modest and gentle of heart. I mean... I may be a barrow digger, but I'm no grave robber. Oh, come on. <laughs> ah. 
Aha. A fine spot to take a rest. While I wait for this achievement to pop, the English countryside is fucking beautiful. I, um... I landed in Manchester. So I was across the fucking country from where I needed to be. Um, achievement unlocked rest, but I'll just go on with the story for a minute. Um... And, uh, I will never forget when the train finally got out of Manchester proper. And I made, like, four or five different stops. And, uh... And it got out of Manchester proper, like, out of a tunnel. And I just saw these gorgeous rolling hills, like, I've never seen before in my life. It was... One of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I live in an area that's very, uh... Um, very foresty, very shrouded in trees. So this is like, uh, so like just like these big rolling hills were just astounding. Like they were gorgeous. Oh, a fairy circle. I'm not sure if these are poisonous or edible. Uh, more importantly, it's a fairy circle. I'd better not touch them. They could be poisonous. The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. Okay. Okay, now let's go get the father. Now that I've kind of got an idea of where I'm going. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh yes, a rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Aye, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land, something I wholeheartedly disagree with. To which god his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. Why do you say that? Oh, my apologies. Don't listen to my oafish conjecture. Let us move on. Uh-huh. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. Excellent. I feel the fresh air will do me well. Follow me. That bench was a missable achievement. Again, I'm only looking at this for missable ones. I don't know about anything else. Good morning, father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, father. I'm no Excellent. Miss Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. No. You were doing God's work, Mrs. De Plancy. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. <laughs> Let's talk Excuse of me. Grey. Of worms and epitaphs. Make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Which play? God damn it, I need this achievement. Uh... Okay, can I save? Can I save? Can I save? Can I save? Because you can get two, one for knowing it and one for not knowing it. But this one is Richard the Second. Richard the Second. Correct. You are well read, Miss Bateman. <laughs> Studying the work of the Bard is one of my favorite pastimes. We shake. Follow me. 
And yes, I actually did know that. I did. I was not looking at anything for that one. Behold, the vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Beautiful, is it not? Indeed, the moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Tell me, Miss Bateman, do you believe in God? Uh... Yeah, let, let, let's lie and avoid that. Yes. I sensed a hesitation there. No, I believe in... Come now, I will not bring the fire and brimstone upon you for speaking your truth. Well, I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. Oh, Jesus Christ. Come along now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain. Oh. Is that her mom? So she has a sibling. That woman is heavily pregnant. Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, Mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I promise I won't. Good. Now, let's see your father. Oh no, that, that was the nanny. Mommy is crying. Mommy? Mommy? Daddy is sleeping. Is he though? Daddy, wake up! Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina? Y yes My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? I know, maybe that Will is her mom. Will we ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There talk. is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst, ma'am. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you. Oh, she was visiting her father in the beginning, that's right. Oh, because that was her mom, heavily pregnant. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways. But he loves us all. Hmm. Come along now. Hello. She scampered off in a hurry. Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring. And don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. How oh. much farther to Mr. Shoulder's house? Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. But we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. Quote unquote primitive. Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. I beg your pardon? That's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. 
come now. What did you oh, think? But... We walked and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. De Plancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret, and the poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. Guess what we're gonna do? <laughs> we're gonna fucking mention it. Chicken! Here, chuk chuk chuk. Don't encourage them. No. Care to hold one, Father Roach? Put that thing down, would you? You're it's, no fun. It's a chicken! Achievement unlocked, feathered friend. It's a chicken! It's your fellow dinner. Or your, not fellow dinner. It's your, um... Oh, that. <laughs> it's your, uh, it's your future dinner. A sweet little hen. Plump and well groomed. Or, you know, layer of your future breakfast. A fearsome looking beast. A sweet little hen. A pair of thick woolen trousers. No sign of life? None. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <clears throat> it is the very error of the moon. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Oh. Oh, oh, well, that's just a gimme. I was just about to be like, hey, chat, do you know what it is? Because it's, I know it's, uh, someone in chat's favorite Shakespeare play, but they just fucking gave it right to you. But yeah, chat. <laughs> like, what, like, his tragedy, a comedy, or a tello? Like, for fuck's sake. It's a tello. Very, very good play. Uh, Katie's favorite Shakespeare work. Othello? Precisely, Miss Bateman. Your knowledge of the bard is presently flawless. I consider myself to be well-read, Father Roach. It's delightful yeah, to meet Cassie. a fellow bookworm, I must say. My favorite is Macbeth. Although I will say much ado about nothing is hilarious. Okay, so I'll get I'll get the achievement for not knowing Shakespeare uh, on my own because I did save before cutting his arm open before the bloodletting. So I'll go back from that save point. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? Are you dead? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Curse. 
curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. Yeah, just break in, for God's sake. It's locked. I've come a long way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. You ever think something fucking happened to him? No sign of any movement. A woolen undergarment. That glove looks familiar. I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plow and furrow. Yeah, thank you. That's where I was going. The gloves are a pair. Does this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night? Why didn't he come inside to see me? Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to with the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? Let's go. As I say, my child, Mr. Shoulder will make himself known. Do not lose faith. I'm rather frustrated by this situation. Now, now. Things move at a slower pace out here. Something you may not be so accustomed to. I... Come now, Miss Bateman. Well, Mr. Shoulder, you've brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. Why are you looking at me? As we trudged silently back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. The train! That must be Kenneth. Kenneth? My assistant. I see. Well, Miss Bateman, I really must attend to some other matters. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Much Ado About Nothing or Romeo and Juliet chat? I know it. <laughs> I don't mean to like jack myself off literarily, it's just we read a lot of Shakespeare and I'm a lit major and I share a birthday with the guy. I just like Shakespeare. It is Romeo and Juliet. Katie's right. Romeo and Juliet. Correct. That I shall say good night till it be tomorrow. More. You've proven yourself to be an impeccable scholar of the bard, my child. Lord be with you. I they did go make, meet Kenneth at the station. They did make that one a lot harder. Uh, because it could be in Much Ado About Nothing, because that's like... That's a comedy involving a romance, so, I mean, it could be that as well. Both are romances. What's the plaque? Margaret's Lookout. I wonder who Margaret is, or was? I don't remember if we've seen that name somewhere. We probably have. Let's be gossipy. Hello. Good day. <laughs> hmm. Father Roach asked me not to discuss that with Mrs. DePlancy. Oh, you were doing the joke answer. Okay. Oh, let's just do it. Father Roach seems rather under the weather, don't you think? Father Roach? The man is as fit as a lad half his age. What makes you say that? I found him in the woods in a state of considerable distress. Oh my, this is very worrying. I must check on him later. I had no idea. Hmm. Even unlock Scandalmonger. Oh, okay, it was just the extra G there at the end. Okay. Oh, and sarcasm. Okay, yes, normally I would know that. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Thank you, Kazi. Thank you for your time. Lord be. Uh. I'm just making Thomasina into a fucking terrible person. Actually, there's a faster way. Quote unquote faster. Oh, you work here, huh? Where is Kenneth? Arthur. He was supposed to wait for me at the station. Mr. Tillett, where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plough and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. I'm sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's all a blur. I woke up in my bed this morning with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. Oh, and you propositioned her. Shame on you. About last night. What were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him, and promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink, which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... Oh, I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I... No, no, I, I know nought about him. No, nought about Leonard Shoulder. He's definitely not in that freshly dug grave. You're hiding something, Mr. Tillett. I don't believe you. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. A likely story. Look, what would I gain from lying to you? Everyone in the town's lying. I just lying. wanted another drink. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. I, I don't remember out. Hmm. About last night... You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss. Then... nothing. Well, you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I No sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I. Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. He's the cat! My mind has drawn a blank. Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Hmm. I found Mr. Shoulder's house. But he wasn't home. She sounds so worry. proud of herself. You'll find him. I found Mr. Shoulder's house. Yeah, with the father's help. With the vicar's help. How's your headache faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around me skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. So, you work here? Aye. Bewley Station Master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow, I'll tell you that much. 
Censored you taken do wonders for a lost soul. I don't Indeed. know what, what my job is. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Oh, you've heard of his lordship, then? Yes. Do you know him? Aye. He comes into the village from time to time, gives sweets to the children, hires young men to work his land. He's well-liked around here. I sense some hesitation, Mr. Tiller. Yeah, he's not well, at all. we kind of have an unspoken agreement with his lordship. He looks after us, provided we leave him alone. I don't follow. He likes his privacy. Some people do. No one is allowed to visit him. Do you mean to say that he's a bit eccentric? No. I've heard people got fired at when approaching his manor uninvited. Oh, shit. Good grief. But is this true? Well, I won't be the one to find out. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Mm. Thank you, Katie. Hobbs Barrow. It's why Leonard Shoulder invited me to Bewley. He thought I might like to excavate it. I don't know anything. Oi. I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere oh. out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? I can't remember. Mr. Tillett, please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. I'll try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. That's if I ever get to meet him. I'm sure you will. He's he's in that fucking grave, dude. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, I. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. Impossible. Was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here, unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at, sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Where can I find- He lives up- You'll see- Thank you. Farewell- Tara. Oh, Tara. I like that. Oh. Oh, I forgot what that cat's name was. Oh, hello, Cyril. Cyril is no doubt keeping watch on any potential new arrivals from the railway station. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what. Thankfully, no one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. Tis no place for outsiders. So you keep saying. Anyway, no more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one myself. You pay in? Uh, no. I'm broke. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? <laughs> I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. Jesus. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. Bah. Goodbye. Bah. Tara, lass. Okay, let me just like find the postmasters and then we'll call it a break. <sighs> Slash an episode. Put those on the YouTubes. Oh, it's Wally. Oh, this is where they live. Did find it north. I thought this was a vicary. A small plaque beside. Or vicarage. Oh, that must be the postmaster's storeroom. 
Okay. Well, we found the postmaster. So, um, thank you guys for, uh, those of you on YouTube, for watching this first episode of the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. This is going to be a bit of a longer one, longer than any of the other ones I've played of, uh, I've streamed of, uh, Cloak and Daggers. Um, games so uh i will see you guys in the next episode and for those on twitch it is break time so those of you on youtube have a good one take it easy